Lord. We're, we're so thankful that we can can enjoy ourselves here at your, at your house. And Father, as we, as we celebrate another year of life with these individuals, Lord, we just ask that, Lord, you've blessed them so far. I just ask that you just give them a double blessing throughout this year. Yes. We yes. ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Do we have any anniversaries?
He became sin Who knew your sin That we might become His righteousness He humbled himself And he carried the cross Love so amazing His love so
uh, there in that hotel room. When we went into pre-op, I felt the presence of God with me. I literally felt a tangible presence of God with me. I couldn't see it, but I could feel it. And I knew that He was there with me. As they took me down the corridor and I was waving goodbye to my wife, and I had peace, I had joy in my heart. I was worshiping and praising God and thanking God. Because they rolled me into this gigantic operating room with all this apparatus from the ceiling and all these machines. And the surgeon was sitting over against the wall because he works under a microscope. But all the instruments are above the operating table. As they moved me over, I literally felt the presence of God. Amen. Well, went through the surgery for almost seven hours. Went to recovery for a couple hours. Finally got back to my room at 9.30 that night. At 12.30, I was laying there in bed. They had the pneumatic splints on my legs to prevent blood clots and all that. And IVs hooked up, all of that. And uh, I opened, I was laying there in my bed. I opened my eyes and there was a man standing beside my bed. There was no fear. There was no startle or thing. Normally you would think, what, who are you? It wasn't that. There was perfect peace. There was perfect glory. But listen to this. It was a black man. It was a black man. An African man standing beside my bed. And I looked at him. He's standing there. He was wearing a blue shirt with like gray slacks. Uh, like he was just casually dressed. And I had a childlike attitude. I said, what's your name? And he looked right at me and he said, Emmanuel. <laughs> and instantly my mind said, God with us. Yes. And then he said, Elohim. <laughs> and he looked at me and he smiled with the biggest smile, white teeth, and he turned and he walked out of my room. <laughs> I think the whole purpose of that was, of course, God was with me the entire time. He wanted to show me that he was there. That he hadn't forsaken, that he hadn't forgot, but he was there. When he left the room, he took something with him. I didn't even ask for it. He took away my pain. He took away nausea. He took away vomiting. He took away fever. He took away infection. Oh, Literally, from that moment right then, I was healed. The nurses came in. She said, Mr. Lewis, we've got your pain pills for you. I said, I'm refusing them. I don't need them. I said, I have no pain. He said, what's your pain level? I said, zero. Glory. They said, Mr. Lewis, you had major surgery. You have to be in pain. I said, I'm not in pain. I said, can I walk? This is three hours. I, this was at 12.30. I said, I want to get up and walk. They said, if you want to get up, it's okay. I reached down. I pulled the pneumatic splints off my legs. I threw my legs over the bedside. I stood up. Lord. And I walked right up. Glory. 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 I had no pain. I came back. I felt just like I feel right now, brother. I felt no pain. No nothing. I was hungry. Up there at the VA, the, the, you order your meals off the TV. It's a digital menu thing. I got on there. I started order, ordering chocolate chip Belgian waffles, sausage. <laughs> It's his prerogative. It's his prerogative. You know, I, 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 think, 
texted that testimony to Pastor Bill and to Pastor Ron. And I even I even asked God. Um, I, I said, God, because my finite mind, I said, God, you're sitting on the right hand of the Father. Jesus, did you really? I mean, I was lucid. I was awake. I was coherent. I was oriented. I mean, at least I felt I was. I thought maybe, was this a heavenly vision? You know, like John had or like Paul had. I, I said, God, did you actually come and visit me in my room? This is what God told me. Ephesians 4 and 10 says, He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Yes. Heaven cannot contain him. That's it. The earth cannot contain Amen. him. His train fills the temple. Come on. He is omnipresent. Yes. He fills Lord. heaven. He fills earth. He's on the right end of the Father making intercession for us. Lord. But brother, he's in the hospital room. He said, he knows those that are his, brother. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. Miracle after miracle. And this all happened at the Dallas VA. You know, you hear all these horror stories. Listen to this story. The next time somebody's telling you about one of them, you tell them, Brother, a new story. That's right. Let them know that God can move anywhere, anytime, as long as His people turn to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, if you'd like to get your phones and give them all up to the scripture there, you know, some people still read their Bible. Uh, Psalm 106. Psalm 106. The title to the message today is, What Do I Do Now? What do I do now? Some days are good. Some days are bad. And some days are downright terrible. You see, I seem to be out of bounds. You know, like a tire. When it's out of balance. At some speeds, it makes no difference to you. But at other speeds, you lose control. It's bumping, wobbling. Emotions all over the place. So I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, what can make this better? And the scripture that we're looking at today is what the Lord spoke to me. Father, I come to you today yielding my body, my mind, and my spirit totally to you. Take over now, sweet spirit. Minister to your flock. They're not really mine, Lord. They're yours. Bless them with the power of the word of God. Touch them in their heart, their mind, and their body. That you might receive the glory. And that you might receive the praise. Amen. Amen. Psalm 106. It's my intention to use all 48 verses. So buckle your seatbelt. Psalm 106, verse 1. Ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. In good times, in bad times, in terrible times. And we're to give thanks. So what do I have to give thanks for? Salvation. Salvation. Of all the human beings on this world, all the human beings that have been on this world through all the things that we call time, God came looking for me. And God came looking for you. He wanted to help you. I 
thank God for salvation. But I also thank God for strength to endure the test, to endure the attack, to endure the battle. And above all, I give thanks unto the Lord because He's good for hope. Hope. I don't have to see the world just through the lens that's right in front of me at this moment of time. It says that His mercy endureth forever. Do you realize that forever means a world without time? No measurement of days, weeks, months, years, no measurement anymore. We always compare, we've been singing songs, you know, we're, we're going to 10,000 years, we sing songs about 10,000 years in heaven. The Bible says there's not going to be any years in heaven. Right, right. Time will cease to exist. I, I can't quite get that concept around because I build my life around time. How to use that time, how to use it wisely, or even how to goof off correctly. Someone was telling me they wanted to go do something and, and uh, they, they wanted me to go along with them and they said, Brother Bill, come with me, we'll go have fun. And I, I looked right in the eye and seriously, I, what's fun? I, I don't live my life around what's fun. I never have. I'm glad that this mercy is going to endure. You see, because mercy is what holds us together. And mercy is what makes us partners with God. Verse 2 says, Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth all His praises? Who can utter? You have to know before you speak. You have to know you're talking to God. When I'm praying or when I'm praising the Lord, I'm not just making sounds so that you can hear them. I'm making sounds and I'm expressing my soul's most innermost thoughts to the Lord because He's worthy. And I can do that because I know who He is. Standing here before you today, I know my Redeemer liveth. I know He's on the throne or in a hospital room or down on the side of the road when our cars broke down. Wherever we're at, I know Him. And, and because I know him, I have a story to tell. Yes. I love to tell the story. Yes. Will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. We need to utter what we know. We talk about what we know, don't we? We talk about what we feel. Well, brother and sister, I want to get to that place to what I know more than anything else is Jesus, and what I feel more than anything else is Jesus in my life. Amen? Brother and sister, I tell you, it's time to tell the story. It's time for a testimony, brother. Now, that's what I call a testimony. Amen? I got a little nervous. I thought he was going to start preaching there. But, you know, that's all right. I knew I could recycle this message. This is a recyclable one. Amen? But he testified, and he gave, his, he gave the word. He shared the word. Amen? But brother said, it's testimony that it's time, it's time that the church goes on a few more Jericho marches. Yeah, to, to utter what we know. It, it's, it's a little, it, I'm ready for a little pew jumping. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to show forth the praises of God. Yeah. You know we so good. God is so good to us. Amen. My, my, the preacher stopped preaching before 12 today. Man, we are blessed. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> get your focus off of your belly and get your focus off of your relative. Get your focus back on Jesus Christ and tell what you know about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory. Preach. Verse 3. Blessed are they that keep judgment and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Brother and sister, we need to judge each day. We need to judge each day. Not for what happens to us. Not for what happened to us. Not for how we're feeling. But we need to judge each day by where we stand before 
before God? Am I who I need to be? Am I who I'm supposed to be? Do I represent Jesus more than I represent Bill Sanders? Brother and sister, we're saved by grace. We're held in His hand. We're made righteous by His blood. And the psalmist here says in verse 4, Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that Thou bearest unto Thy people. O visit me with Thy salvation. Remember me, Lord. Oh, I want to praise the Lord. I want to praise Him for His mercy and His grace and His truth and His peace and His love. I want to praise Him. What do I do now? Praise the Lord. But well, I don't feel like praising the Lord. Praise the Lord anyway. Amen. I don't have anything to praise about. If you're saved, you do. If you've ever been healed, you do. If you've ever seen the joy of the Lord on somebody's face after they get up from that altar being saved, you've got something to praise the Lord about. Amen. Verse 5. That I may see the good of thy chosen. That I may see the good of thy chosen. That I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation. That I may glory with thine inheritance. That I may glory with thine inheritance. I need to see through the eyes of the Lord. And the only way we can see through the eyes of God is we look through His Word. God tells us in His Word how He feels about everything. God tells us what's sin and what's not sin. God tells us how love works and how forgiveness works and how mercy works and how grace works. God tells us all that in His Word. And so I need to see through those eyes that only the Word can show me. Hmm. I'm so thrilled that He chose me to be His child. Chose me to be His child. He paid the price for my ransom. Come on now. Amen. Amen. We used to sing a song in the church, you know. Satan had me bound, but Jesus set me free. Satan had me bound, but Jesus set me free. Satan had me bound, but Jesus set me free. Sing me glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Glory. He set me free to be an heir and an, an inheritor. Yes. An inheritor of everything that God is. Heir and joint heir with Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that was hung on the cross and became sin for me. Who was put in a tomb that had to be borrowed. He only borrowed because he wasn't going to need it very long. Amen? Amen. But on that third day, he comes forth alive, strong, and not as the Lamb anymore, and He comes forth as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Some people say he, they don't recognize Him as King until He comes back on His white horse. Brother and sister, He was King when He stepped out of that tomb. He, he had finished it all right then and there. He, he did it. Amen? I am free. I am set free to, as the chosen. I am set free to be a part of the family of God. Now, brother and sister, <laughs> I want to apologize. I want to apologize for all of the areas and all the ways. I've been minister at this church for a lot of years. The number doesn't matter. But I know that I've let probably every one of you down in one way or another at some time. However, I apologize. And I ask you to forgive me. Pray for me. It seems over the last few weeks and months, I just can't get my act together, no matter how hard I try. And that's where I came up with, what do I do now, Lord? I don't like where I am right now. I don't like who I am right now. And God says, just praise me, Bill. Amen. Just praise me, Bill. Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. I'm not asking for your praise for me. I'm just encouraging you. I know a lot of you are going through a lot worse things than I'm going through. A whole lot worse. But brother and sister, the same advice from God for me is for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, uh, it says in that, that I may glory with thine inheritance. You know, with is a powerful idea. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I'm a part of something around here. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes I get a little braggadocious when I'm talking about Elm Grove, but it's because I'm proud of Elm Grove. I'm proud of every one of you. I'm proud of what you do for the Lord, the sacrifices you make. I, 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 ever, ever, ever since Corbin's uh, act of faith and, and, and this I, I mean, I have been bragging and I have been bragging and I have been bragging. And, 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 and please, I'm not doing it just I know I'm prideful in that, but I'm not doing it just because of my own pride. Brother and sister, it's, it's, it means we're a part of something wonderful. Amen. Amen. And Corbin has come in and chosen to be a part of something wonderful. And you have chosen to come in and be a part of something wonderful. And we need to give God the glory for it. Now let's go into the sixth verse here. And I'm going to cover quite a bit of ground here before we say it. So just follow along if you can. Verse 6. The psalmist is saying to God, We have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea, even at the Red Sea. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power to be known. You see, all that God was doing for the children of Israel, when they were coming out of Egyptian bondage, he, a part of that was being done so that not only they could know God, and they could know His mighty power, but so that we can know God, and we can know His mighty power. That we can know the power that will heal a sick body, that will raise a, a, a person up who has been down and down and down and down so long that they don't even know there's any other place to be. You can stay at the bottom of, 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 the, of the well just long enough, or so long, that that becomes all you know. That your vision upward begins to disappear. And all you do is look around at all the water and the muck and all the things that are just right around you at the bottom of the well. Right after I married Sister Nancy, her dad bought a piece of property down here in Glen Rose. And it had an old hand-dug well that was 32 feet deep. And it just had a little bit of just hardly anything in the bottom of it. And we all got together and we decided we need to clean that well out. Somebody told us if we'd clean that well out, we'd get some water. And I was the youngest and the skinniest. And you have to use your imagination. <laughs> but, so there I was. Lord on a rope into, the, into this well. I don't know how long the well had been there, but that, that muck that we were talking about that was in the bottom of the well was about three feet deep. And so I was up above my knees in this muck. Five gallon bucket, scooping it up. And they were pulling it up, dumping it out, pulling it up, dumping it up. And I, I, I mean, the whole time I was down there, all I could think about was getting out. You see, my mind wasn't focused on what I was doing. My focus was on my day of deliverance, on my moment of victory, when I rose above the muck and the mire and all the slop and stuff. And, and brother and sister, everything that God does in our life and everything He did for the children of Israel, oh, brother, think about it here. In the next verse it says, He rebuked the Red Sea also, and it was dried up. So He led them through the depths as through the wilderness. And he saved them from the hand of him that hated him and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. And the waters covered their enemies. There was not one of them left. Then they be then believed they his words and sang his praise. Amen. 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 I didn't have the privilege of being there with Brother Ken at the hospital this time. I, I wasn't able to be there. I let him down. This is one of the things I'm upon. That's not the way I pastor. It's not who I am. It's not my ministry. But I, I just 
for whatever reason, I couldn't get the motor started. I couldn't get things working. But you know what? Even though I couldn't be right there in the room, every time he sent me a text, it was praise time. Amen. It was time to give God the glory for doing things that we, we really expected him to do it. Amen? Amen. We expect our God to do great things. Yes. Isn't that why we pray? We expect God to do something. Right. We believe. We hope. Yes. Yes. And we should praise the Lord because of that. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. They believed his words. They sang his praise. When they were on the other side of the Red Sea. Two sides of the same problem. On one side... Oh, woe is me, Moses. What did you do? Bring us out here in the wilderness so we could all be slaughtered? What kind of a leader are you, Moses? Don't you know how to, to get in touch with God for us? Don't you know how to make things work for us? That's exactly how they were treating Moses. But then God. <laughs> then God. Said, hey, family, let me show you who I am. I'm not a God of words or ideas. I'm a God of action. Hallelujah. Good church. Amen. And I'm amazed at Moses. You know, I, I'm really amazed at Moses. These people are on him and they're just tearing him apart. They're, 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 just, they're just destroying Moses as a person. And God says, go take the stick, Moses. Go over there to the side of it. Come on, Moses. Keep leading these ornery Backwards, stubborn. <laughs> but God sit there and he's my associate. <laughs> yeah. If it wasn't for Aaron, I, we wouldn't be in this place anyway. Ship them. God had to deal with Moses, and Moses said, Alright, Lord, I'm gonna do what you want me to do. Deliverance comes. And you know the story. The whole tribe of Israel, all their possessions, everything that they had taken out of Egypt in the way of wealth and power and authority, they took it to the other side. And when they get to the other side, when the problem is behind them, then they look back and say, oh, here comes Pharaoh and his army, all of his chariots. And then all of a sudden, God just... Rolls the water back on top of all of them, and they all die. I read something in, in, the other day in, 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 a, in an article that archaeologists have found in, in a place in the Red Sea. They have found a mountain of old chariot wheels yes. and parts of chariots and That's horse right. bones mm -hmm. that haven't been destroyed. Right. Oh, you mean this really could have happened? Maybe it wasn't just a story? Yeah. Brother and sister, I believe it literally happened. Yes. Yes. So they believed his words and they say praise. Oh, the enemy's gone. We're on the right side of the Red Sea. Let's throw a party. Let's have dinner on the ground. <laughs> let's celebrate. <laughs> but let's read verse 13. They soon forgot his works. They waited not for his counsel but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. Mm -hmm. They envied Moses also in the camp, and Aaron, the saint of the Lord. The earth opened up and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Abram. And a fire was kindled in the company. The flame burned up the wicked. They made a calf at Oreb and worship the molten image. Thus they changed their glory into the similitude of an ox that even grass. They forgot God their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, and terrible things by the Red Sea. Wherefore he said that he would destroy them. This is God. He had put up with about as much as he could take out of this bunch. And he was about to destroy them all. The word of God bears all this out. Amen. Had
had not Moses his chosen stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath, lest he should destroy them, yes, they despised the pleasant land, they believed not his word, but murmured in their tents, and hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord. The same people that crossed the Red Sea on dry ground, that left Egypt with the spoils of the most powerful nation on the face of the earth at the time. Israel was not a wealthy nation when they went into bondage in Egypt, but they were the wealthiest of all nations when they left the land of Egypt. And there's many, many, many historical records outside of the scripture that tell us about the third dynasty in Egypt and how that after the third dynasty, Egypt never knew the same wealth of the power and the glory that they did. In other words, before the children of Israel were set free, they, they were it. They had it all. But after the children left, they never had it again. That's history. That's history. Yes. But these same people, they looked around at the walls of that deep well. They looked around at the fact that they were in a place where they didn't have water. They were in a place where they didn't have bread. They were in a place where they didn't have comfort that they expected. And they kept looking back. Oh, let's go back to the old days. Let's go back to the old days. You know, I, I understand them say, you know, a lot of times we get to talking about the old days here at Elm Road. And praise the Lord, we had those old days. But oh, church, let's wake up and realize we do not want to go back. <laughs> Never go back. God didn't let the children of Israel go back to Egypt. He didn't, he didn't lead them. He said, you keep going forward to the land of promise. Yes. Well, brother and sister, our land of promise is not a better realm road. Our land of promise is eternity with God. Yes. We need to go forward. Yes. We need to go forward. Yes. Glory. Hmm. Verse 26. Therefore he lifted up his hand against them to overthrow them in the wilderness, to overthrow their seed also among the nation and to scatter them in the lands. They joined themselves also unto Balpeor and ate and sacrificed and ate the sacrifices of the dead. Thus they provoked him to anger with their inventions and a plague break in upon them. Then stood up Phinehas and executed judgment and so the plague was saved. These people just kept drifting farther and farther and farther away from thus saith the Lord. It came to the point that they were, they were coexisting with the heathen gods. They were coexisting with the lies. They were coexisting with all the idol worship. Into the point that they were going to the idol worship places and buying their meat because it was cheap there. And because it was what they wanted there. They found the easy way of life. But then God raised up a judge, Phinehas. Phinehas, what did he do? He executed judgment. He said, stop! There's only one God. And he's a jealous God. Stop sharing your affection. Stop sharing your praise. Stop sharing your adoration with anyone else. Amen. And because of Phinehas executing judgment, you know, you can know what's right. You can know it perfectly. But if you don't do it, it doesn't mean a thing. To him that knoweth to do right and doeth it not, to him it is sin. But because Phinehas executed judgment, he lived what he believed. And what he believed that was God. God is God. He's God on the platform. He's God back at the door. He's God in the amen corner. He's God all over the floor. I know God. He's God. And God don't want to change. I know God. He's God. And he always will be God. Here's what it says about Phinehas. And because he executed judgment, 
it was counted unto him for righteousness unto all generations forevermore. God points out when you do judgment, our society says, don't judge, don't judge, don't judge. Brother and sister, don't listen to that lie. Yeah, that's right. You and I need to be judged. Yeah. And we need to judge one another. Yeah. That we be accountable. That we aid one another. Yeah. I can't tell you the number of times I've been in a place where I didn't recognize that I was in the wrong place. But because one of my brothers, one of my sisters, one of the members of this congregation pointed it out to me. In love, they're judging me. Help me get away from a bad place. Or an erroneous idea. Say, well, I don't want to be judged because I don't want, I don't want to judge anybody because I don't want to be judged. Bless your heart. Stop being so selfish. It's not all about you. It's not all about me. It's about him. Amen. Amen. Verse 32. They angered him also at the waters of strife, so that it went ill with Moses for their sake. Because they provoked his spirit so that he spake unadvisedly with his lips. All that pressure on Moses didn't stop just because they got on the other side of the Red Sea. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them. They were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. And they served their idols which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto the devils and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Thus were they defiled with their own works, and went a-whoring with their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of God kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance. And he gave them into the hand of the heathen, and they were hated. They that hated them ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them, and they were brought into subjection under their hand. Many times did he deliver them, but they provoked him with their counsel. They were brought low for their iniquity. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry. And remembered, and he remembered for them his covenant and repentant according to the multitude of his mercies. Amen. You see, it, doesn't, it, it didn't matter to God how far they went. Mm -hmm. When they would wake up mm -hmm. and they'd cry unto him. When they'd come back. When they'd say, Lord, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I was wrong. Wash me again. Mm -hmm. Heal my mind. <clears throat> Heal my heart. I love that song that we sing sometimes, creating me a clean heart. Yes. Oh, that's a prayer. And every time anybody prays that, God's right there again for you. See, God doesn't want you to be destroyed because of iniquity or sin. God doesn't want you to fall by the wayside and never, never have an opportunity. God wants you to be his child. God wants to take your hand and lead you into his eternal presence. Yes. Verse 46, he made them also to be pitied of all those that carried them captive. 47, save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the heathen. Why? To give thanks unto thy holy name and to triumph in thy praise. Amen. Have you ever been lost in praise and you didn't know who else was in the sanctuary? You didn't know who else was in the world. You didn't care who was going, what was going on. You didn't care what your body was up to. You didn't care what time of day it was. You didn't because you were lost, totally lost, consumed, just praising the Lord. That's when He inhabited you. The, you know, it says that He inhabits the praises of His people. Brother Ken got the testimony he got because he started off praising the Lord, and then the Lord can inhabit. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the same here in the scripture. Blessed 
Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. And let all the people say amen. amen. And the last four words. Praise ye the Lord. Praise. What do we do now? We praise the Lord. Lord. Yeah. What do we do when the bank book's empty? Praise the Lord. What do we do when the cabinets are empty? Praise the Lord. What do we do when our emotions are empty? Praise the Lord. What do we do when our emotions are so full we're erupting? Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What do we do now? Praise the Lord.